Hi, this is Phil Chandler. If you're a honey producing beekeeper, you really need this. This is a digital refractometer made by Anton Parr in Austria. It's a laboratory standard instrument. It's known as a smart refractometer because it uses your smartphone as a display. It's capable of many things, uh, but in this context, we're going to be talking about it as an instrument for beekeepers who are interested in knowing the water content of their honey. Why is that important? If you've got too much water in your honey, the wild yeasts in the atmosphere will ferment the honey and it will produce gas and it will either blow the lids off your jars or it will explode the jar, neither of which are ideal outcomes for your customers. You're going to get complaints for sure. Uh, not only that, but you'll also probably be breaking the law because there are legal limits to the amount of water you can have in your honey for those very reasons. In the UK, you're not allowed to have more than 20% water content in your honey. Now, the bees generally don't cap their honey until the water content is lower than is required for fermentation. In other words, they reduce the water content of the honey to the point where it will no longer ferment. In most cases, in, for, for normal honey, shall we say, that will be a maximum of 20% water. For heather honey, it's slightly more, it's about 23%. There are limits which apply in the UK and Europe and also in, in America. They may be different in America, I'm not sure. But in this country, we must keep our, the water content of our honey below 20%. This is going to be a video review of the SmartRef, Smart Digital Refractometer made by Anton Parr, and they sent it to me in return for this review video, which will be an honest review based on my experience of the instrument, and you'll be able to see how it's used and what sort of results you get. I will do some testing live on air, as it were, and you'll be able to see how easy it is to use and what it will do for you as a beekeeper. As a rule I don't do unboxing videos, I mean this is the 21st century after all, but just for this just for this once I'm going to show you the the box and the contents of the box for this refractometer. So here's the box it comes in, it's a very nice box and the sleeve slides out in a predictable manner. It's a nice fitting, very nice box and we take the lid off and inside is the SmartRef digital refractometer. Uh, it's got a handy little hole at the top there where I can withdraw the instrument and you can see that it's very well made, a very solid little thing. So the device itself is robust, it's well made and it is pretty much waterproof. It's quite a high standard. So it's going to withstand, you know, reasonable uh, rough handling but honestly this is a scientific instrument so I wouldn't throw it around. It's extremely accurate and it needs to be kept clean to maintain its accuracy. I'll come to that in a minute. So what else is in the box? Well there's this bit here which opens somewhere. Here we go. This opens and inside we have a number, I think it's four, of these little these things, pipettes. These are for sucking up samples of the liquid to place into the sampling well on the refractometer. So there's, I think, four of those. You can buy these uh, these pipettes if you need more of them. Uh, you can buy them very cheaply on eBay, of course. Right, so there's four of those. There is an instruction manual. Uh, here we go. There's the safety guide, quite a large safety guide in multiple languages uh, to make sure that you don't do anything silly. And here is a very slim uh, quick start guide. So this is going to tell you, you know, the basics of, uh, of using the instrument, but I will point out that it is, it's very easy to use and uh, we'll come to that when I do the demonstrations for you. But this is the these are the quick start instructions. Now there's um, a QR code here which uh, enables you to download the 
are the apps for this instrument. There are five apps you can use for different purposes. The one we're going to be interested in as beekeepers is called Labmeister and I'll, I'll demonstrate the use of Labmeister in a minute. Uh, it's linked by Bluetooth to your phone of course, that's how it works. Right, so there's the bits. Um, oh, there's a card in here which says, uh, oh, there's a thing called Easy Dens that they also make, uh, which is, I think, mainly to do with brewing. Another use of this instrument, one of several, one of many, I would say, is in the brewing industry, or if you're doing home-brewed beer or wine. For example, if you're making mead from your honey, or you're making honey beer, and I recommend that you try both of those things, then uh, you may want to try this um, add-on uh, device called EasyDens, but I won't deal with that in this particular video. You can look at that up for yourselves. In any case, this instrument will tell you the uh, sugar content of your starter, if you're brewing, and it will also tell you the alcohol content of the finished product. So, as I said, multiple uses. I told you a bit about the SmartRef digital refractometer, and now we're going to do some practical stuff just to show you how it works. Now this device connects to your phone using Bluetooth so that's the first thing to do you activate Bluetooth on your phone you know the usual thing and then you press there's just only a single button I'm just going to turn the camera down right there's just a single button on this device and it's right there and so you press that to connect to your phone to pair it with your phone for Bluetooth purposes so that the two things can communicate then on your phone I've actually got this, you can see there's five apps here that uh, come with this device or downloadable from their website for free. I'm going to be using Labmeister, which is the one that's appropriate for what we want to do. So I've started that. Now then, before I do any measurements, the first thing you've got to do with this device, as with many scientific um, pieces of kit, is to calibrate it. So that means you've got to basically zero it using distilled water. So I'm going to add some distilled water to the sampling well and you fill it up to, there's a line that goes around the well which you can see, you fill it up to there and I'm going to then go up to the, in the top right hand corner there's three little dots and it says zero adjustment. So I'm going to hit that. Okay, so this time it says the adjustment was successful. So it's set to zero and it's ready to take measurements all right so it says h2o percentage and zero degree uh, sorry not zero degrees it says degrees c so we're measuring degrees celsius and it's going to be measuring from a zero point i imagine that's what it means all right so i'm going to get rid of this water and dry it again okay we're ready I'm going to start with a sample of this honey. I'm actually going to use, rather than the pipettes, uh, here's a pipette, rather than using these pipettes, which I have tried before, they, they, they work reasonably well with a thin liquid, but they're not so good on honey. So I'm going to use a little syringe, which I have carefully washed and dried. Okay, that way I can suck up a bit more honey than those pipettes. I'm going to add this to the well, here it is, up to the mark, and then we're going to, I'm just going to press restart. You may have seen the flash there in the little well, that's the internal light. And now it's taken a reading, so it's come up with 19.8% water, and it's correcting for 24.5 degrees centigrade, which is fine. So, 19.8 is very close to our 20% legal limit. So this might be, um, it's, this is perfectly actually okay to sell, or to bottle and to sell, uh, but it's very close to the 20% to the limit, which means that if somebody leaves the lid off the jar for an extended period of time, because honey is hygroscopic and absorbs water from the atmosphere, it is possible that that might tip it over the edge and take it into the 20 plus percent range, which might possibly cause 
uh, initiate uh, fermentation in the honey. So that's something to be aware of. This is still fine to sell, but you just need to be aware that you're pretty close to the limit there. Okay, so I'm going to clean out the well with distilled water. I'm going to open a, a brand new syringe straight out of the packet. Right, so a new fresh syringe, and we're going this time we're going to take a sample from this little jar here, which is actually honey from Uganda. So it's quite different to the honey that we've been looking at so far from Dartmoor. And I'm going to extract a little from the jar. Now this stuff is really quite gloopy. That's a technical term. So I'm expecting a, a considerably lower reading than, than the last one, so let's see. We're going to add that to the sampling well, maybe a little more. Okay, so now we're ready to, well let's save that last reading because it's got a little database built in so you can actually save your readings which is nice. Start the measurement. I'll just shade it slightly. All oh, right, okay, so we've got a big difference here. I hope you can see that, maybe you can't see the screen. Here we go. It's reading 14.1% water, which is considerably less than was in the other sample. I'm not surprised by that, really, because this is a very uh, gloopy and sticky honey, um, and it tastes very different to my honey as well. I think it's it may well be honeydew, actually, that's quite possible, but it's got a much lower water content, so this honey, will, there's no danger of it fermenting at all. So I'm just going to clean out the well again, make sure it's thoroughly clean and dry. Okay, so we've got another honey sample here. This is taken from a, a different hive, and it's been filtered uh, to, well, below 0.5 millimetres, that's for sure. And I'm going to use my, I'm going to take another fresh, clean syringe. And I'm just going to lower that into the sample and suck a bit up. Okay, this is much more like the first honey. Um, be interesting to see what the reading is on this one. So that's going to go into the well. It's a very pale coloured honey, this one. Okay, so I'm going to save that last reading to our database. It says it's saved, okay. And I think what I'm supposed to do is press restart here. I think that would be the appropriate thing. So we'll do that. Okay, so this one. Mm -hmm. Something else came through there. This one has come up with um, a much higher reading. This one's come up with 19.9% water, which means it's very sailing very close to the wind. In fact, it's very close to the legal limit for water in honey. So we might decide that that's maybe best to um, make into mead or something like that, rather than risk uh, selling it and having it explode people's jars in their cupboard. What I was hoping to do, and maybe I will do it yet, is to take some fresh nectar out of a hive, but the two hives I've got to hand um, really haven't got very much nectar in them. It's been quite a poor year, uh, and it's a poor time of year to take nectar, but maybe I'll have a look. Okay, so this is, um, <laughs> this is nectar as fresh as it comes. Um, it's so fresh that it's still got bees on it, now I'm going to attempt, I don't know whether this is possible, I may have to revert to using, oh, I don't know, maybe I can squeeze in between there, excuse me bees, I just need to get in, in here and see if I can suck up some of your nectar. Hmm. Can I get enough out of that cell, I wonder? No. I'm just going to put this on the... Oh, 
Okay, that's not going to be enough as a sample. Um, let me see if I can find some more. Yeah, I know. These people just come along, steal your food. So what I'm attempting to do here is just withdraw enough nectar from these cells to do a test. don't know whether that's going to be enough let's have a look okay it took a reading even though it's there's a minimal amount in there and it's come out at 16.6 percent uh, water which is interesting because that's lower than the sample of honey that I took earlier and this is uncapped nectar so okay I'm going to put that back in the hive okay well that's interesting um, I was expecting that to have more water in it than the honey but in fact uh, it says 16.6 percent so I'm not going to argue with this instrument and what that's telling us is that the honey they're making right now that they're about to cap has actually got less water in it than the honey that's been in this tub uh, and looks yeah it looks about the right I mean, it's maybe it's a little bit on the runny side but it's it's coming from sealed comb, that's the interesting thing. This is honey that's coming from a piece of comb that I took off a, um, out of a nuke, I think, the other day. Has got more water in it than the honey that they're actually capping at the moment. So, we've learned something. Okay, so I've learned something today, that the honey that's being currently capped actually has a lower water content than honey that I took off maybe uh, three weeks ago, uh, I only took this is just a, an odd piece of comb that I took from a that bees had been building in a feeder or something like that. So it's not you know necessarily the honey I would put in a jar. But nevertheless, it's interesting that um, contrary to expectations, the fresh, uh, not yet sealed honey that's come straight out of a hive uh, is has actually got less water in it than honey that's been in a tub for a while. So, and also the, the African honey, the Ugandan honey, um, has less water still, but that's not such a surprise because this is a very kind of gloopy honey. So there we go. So that shows to me that um, things don't always pan out as, as, they, as you expect them to um, in the beekeeping world. And that's, again, not, not that much of a surprise, I suppose, because it often happens that way. But it means that when you are extracting honey or whether you're doing cut comb or whatever you're doing with your honey or just taking some for your, for your own use um, don't take it for granted that the honey is ripe just because it's sealed don't take it for granted that it's not ready for bottling even if it isn't sealed use something like this use this instrument ideally this is a great little little device for this purpose um, to tell you exactly when it's okay to, to bottle your honey. Um, along with the other uses it has, which include, as I think I've already mentioned, the alcohol content of beer, wine, spirits, um, also the sugar content of your starter mix if you're, if you're home brewing, uh, especially if you're making mead and honey beer. Um, multiple uses for this device. So, and I believe, I, I remember reading in the, uh, in the literature that you can actually use it for analysing uh, the sugar content of urine, both in your in your in humans and in pets. So potentially diagnostic as well. There you go, another inch, another use for it. So I hope I've convinced you that uh, this instrument is worth con worth your consideration, and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Maybe make some comments below uh, as to what you think about it. Um, it, especially if you've used it yourself 
um, but uh, maybe some comments on the potential usefulness of this device would be interesting in the comments below. And by the way, uh, please like and subscribe if you feel that so inclined. It helps my channel. And um, I hope to see you soon, or you to see me, you know, the usual thing. You didn't see, really see me lick that, did you?